below. Uh, this can apply to if you're cold and the dog's gonna start eating right now. Sheriff, come here little guy, come here. Hey, what is going on guys? I am Chris Luck and today we're gonna be talking about how to dress for extremely cold weather. We're talking below zero Fahrenheit, negative 20, negative 30. Um, this can honestly apply to if you get cold at 32 degrees. Um, the most important thing about in the cold weather is how you dress. Um, you can handle it better if you're dressed and more prepared for it. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off with the socks. And these are merino wool socks. These are the basic standard for if you want to stay warm. You can also line them with some regular cotton socks. So if they make your feet sweaty, um, you can do that if you would like. And then since we're talking about the feet, let's go right to the boots. These are the boots I use. They're Arctic Sport by Muck. They say they're designed up to negative 40. You kind of might start feeling it a little bit before that. But with the socks, and if they're double lined, you should be good. Uh, never had a problem with these. The only thing I don't like is they hurt my hips because they are just so stiff and like they feel kind of clunky. But the more you wear them, the more you break them in. And they're not as bad. I really do enjoy this brand. There's a few others you can get, but whatever you do, make sure they're worth the money and you don't want to cheap out on your shoes negative 40, negative 60, some even say like negative 100 or something. Just make sure they're top quality. You won't go wrong with the Arctic Sports. I'm just gonna start throwing stuff so I don't repeat anything. Socks, shoes, done. Now we're gonna talk about the thermals. Okay, this is just something you put right over top. This is your basic uh, thermals. These are level three. Level three pants and level three shirts by Terra, terra Firmer or something like that. I'll put a uh, link in the description for what I have. Terra Firmer and level three, you can get level four as well, but I wouldn't even bother getting anything less than level three. Uh, keeps me really warm and I'm really happy with it. So we'll throw these over here. And since we're talking about shirts, just a basic dry fit t-shirt that I throw over top of that all I really need. All right, so once I put that on, I put on my snow pants. Now, I love these snow pants. They were actually really cheap. Uh, I think I got them at Costco in Fairbanks. They're Jerry, just G-E-R-R-Y. Really, really good quality snow pants. They're kind of lined. Keeps me wet proof, wind proof, and they're very warm, especially when you wear the thermals. I actually only wear the thermals if it's below zero when I'm wearing these pants. So. That's how you know they're warm. Okay, moving on from the snow pants, if it's below zero, I'll probably throw on a nice heavy duty sweater as well. Um, if it's like five, 10, 15 degrees out, I probably won't even wear the sweater because I think the jacket with the thermal and the t-shirt is enough. No, but, but I found these results on search. Are you kidding me? Did you guys just hear Google go off? Heavy duty sweater below zero, or whatever you're comfortable with. If you wanna wear it, go ahead, but that's just what I prefer. All right, we'll toss the sweater over to the side. Let's go on to the jacket here. This is just a basic uh, red jacket that I got. It's by Storm Tech. It's pretty warm. There's no fancy liner in them, but it's definitely warm and very windproof. I really do like this jacket. Paired with all of that, you will not be feeling any cold. You really want a high quality jacket, but honestly, on top of the jacket, I think the most important thing is definitely the thermals. If you want to stay warm, the feet, socks, very, very important. All right, so I throw the jacket over here. My cat is over here and he's probably thinking, what is going on? And then I'll jump to the hat. I just do like a regular Carhartt hat, nice and warm. Uh, they make fancier ones that are warmer, but you definitely want to keep your head warm and when it's like negative 20 you really need to put at least a face guard on 
Uh, I just like this like, like Carhartt ski mask that I have. It works really good. Thanks, honey, for buying that. Appreciate it. Uh, but definitely when it's negative 20, you do not want to be breathing in that cold air. You want something protecting your mouth because that cold air will hurt your lungs. Okay, now if you're probably looking at me, um, where's my gloves? Well, the truth is, I don't have the gloves that I need for this video right now. So when I go up to Fairbanks in March, I will be getting proper attire gloves. Uh, you, don't, you do not want cheap gloves. Like I said, once your hands or feet get cold, it's game over. You wanna keep those protected. What I'm gonna be buying is either like a ski kind of glove where it has a liner and a uh, waterproof, you know, warm uh, top over it. Or I think if I could find them is I'd rather have a nice mitten like that where I could just take the mitten out and use my fingers real quick to mess with the camera and then put my hand back over it. Mittens actually keep your hands warmer than gloves. So just keep that in mind. Um, I definitely will be looking forward to hopefully finding those mittens that I want. Uh, I'll throw an example up right here of something I kind of want to get. All right, next up, definitely want your hand and feet warmers. These are a given, they're cheap, and they definitely will just save you in so much in that cold. So throw that over there, throw that over there. If you're going to go out shooting Aurora in the extreme cold, you obviously need a nice flashlight, headlamp, and uh, these are just basic ones. If you're a photographer, you want a headlamp that has a red light. So if you can have one that has a red light, perfect. Um, you definitely want that. You don't want to be flashing people with their cameras out and taking pictures. I hate having a time lapse with flashes of light in it. I want it to be neutral. So you kind of go, got to go as far away as people from people as you can. So really bright flashlight that I got too. Uh, this is a Phoenix 1000 wireless or something. Phoenix TK20R, it's rechargeable. Uh, the old one I had was ABC battery or one, two, three batteries or something. So the fact that this is rechargeable is really helpful. And then on my camera, if you guys are photographers, I have a loom cube to light up a foreground or extra uh, light if you need it, a mic, and then a L bracket so I could easily switch from horizontal and vertical photos. But that's basically it. So that's basically it. Shane and I are hosting a three-night Aurora workshop in Fairbanks March 15th to 17th. He's been really busy. I'm trying to get him over so he can record the video with me to officially announce it. But right now you can check out chrisluckphoto.com, click workshops, click the Fairbanks workshop, get all the details you need. And until then, we will be posting a video. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can join us up there and that would be fun. Spring equinox is one of the best times to see the Northern Lights as it is typically more active. Plus we're coming out of solar maximum. So it should be a really good time. Anyway, that is gonna wrap up the video. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see more information about the workshop, more details about my photography. And if you wanted to see my everyday Alaskan life, I post it all here on YouTube. I try to upload at least two or three videos a week and I'll catch you in the next one. Shadow looks a little freaked out. Hey Shadow. <laughs>